Can we have question from mic one, please? My name is Das, Anthony Das, and I am a trainer by profession. My question is like this. Doctor mentioned about universal brotherhood, and doctor also mentioned that the similarities, uh, the way we see God. Uh, he mentioned various religions. I, I would just like to ask this. Will it be okay for people of a different faith, let's say Christians, can Christians uh, refer to the, the, their gods or the God as uh, Allah? Brother asked a very good question. Now, can people of other faith refer to their God as Allah? The answer was given in my lecture that if the God who you call as Allah fits in this four line definition, you can refer, otherwise, you can't. And I gave you a sample, a test, that there are some human beings in the world who call Bhagavan Rajneesh to be God. Now, when you put Bhagavan Rajneesh to the test of Surya class, it fails. So if you call Bhagavan Rajneesh as Allah, it is totally wrong. The same way the God you are worshipping. Which God do you worship as? I am from the Christian faith. According to Christian faith, I am a student of compared religion. I know what the Bible says. I have studied the Bible. I can quote the Bible from my mind. I am asking you, who do you believe to be God? The creator of earth. Is creator no problem, but do you believe Jesus to be God? Jesus is the son of God. Son of God. If God has son, then he is not God. <laughs> then... okay. The Bible has got sons by the tons. If you read the Bible, Adam was son of God. Ephraim was son of God. Israel was son of God. All those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. In that idiom, Anyone who followed the commandment of God is a godly person. In that way, I've got no problem. In Hindi, we say, beta is a So no problem, beta. But if someone says, janava beta, that means he's insinuating. So only calling son of God is a good word. But if you say, begotten son, do you believe Jesus is begotten son? Jesus is the son of God. So son of God, even Ephraim is son of God, Israel is son of God. So do you mean that Ephraim and Israel is the same as Jesus, peace be upon him? I think uh, it would not be fair to question in that manner because if you were to see Christianity from a Christian point of view... Not Christian point of view. I okay. see Christianity according to Bible point of view. Okay. If, you okay. want to, biblical... if you want to understand any religion, go to the scriptures. If you want to understand Islam, don't look at me. Don't look at Muslims. You analyze the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. If you want to understand Christianity, you have to study the Bible. If I have to understand Hinduism, I have to study the Vedas and the other scriptures. So what you have to know that as a student of comparative religion, I am a student of comparative religion. I have studied the Bible, I have studied the Vedas, I have studied the Quran. And we have question and session for people to correct us. If you disagree with me, you have a right to disagree, but you have to tell me why. So, so I have given the talk here. And I know the concept of God according to Bible very well. I am not bothered what the church says. Because for me, Bible is important, not the church. So similarly, as far as the question is concerned, you can call the God you worship as Allah if your God fits in this four-line definition. So in this four-line definition, even your Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, does not fit, and even Jesus Christ, peace be upon his father does not fit, because God cannot have son. So both of them you cannot call as God. Hope that answers the question. So, Doctor, you disqualify Christians from calling Allah simply because of the fact that Christians believe that Jesus is the son of God. So that's the reason. If he's the son of God, begotten son, I disqualify. Because this statement, what you say, son of God, is referring to your Bible, Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16. I'm quoting. And you know that very well. Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Uh, You're smiling. Doctor, the way you are, seem to be answering my question, the spirit you are answering my question, uh, the essence you are answering my question, doesn't seem to be promoting this brotherhood between you and me. It is putting a separation between Correct, you and me. Because if you go against the Bible, I will separate from you. <laughs> if you are towards the Bible, I am with you. <laughs> Anyone, any human being who wants to create disharmony because he's going away from a scripture, I will not agree with him. Because you are going away from the scripture and going towards your church. I'm saying go back to your Bible. You quote the Bible. I'm giving references. 
What you are saying is that out of your own mind. Now, if you try and take the Christians away from the Bible, I will not agree with you. You quote the Bible and you quote the verses what Jesus Christ, peace be upon you, spoke. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he said worship me. And I told you, if any Christian, anyone in KL or in Malaysia or anywhere in the world shows me from any version of the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God or where he says worship me, I, Dr. Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity. <laughs> if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, according to the Gospel of John, he was circumcised on the eighth day. Brother, are you circumcised? No, I'm not. I'm circumcised. So I'm following the teachings of Jesus Christ or you? If you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, don't have alcohol. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that do not be drunk with wine. Brother, do you have alcohol? I don't, I have never tasted alcohol in my lifetime. Ah, but the Christians as a whole have or not? Say again? The Christians have as a whole or not? I haven't. I'm asking the Christians as a whole. I haven't. The Christian <laughs> as a whole. Do they have I or not? I haven't. I would not want to speak for other people. Fine. Christians. You don't have. Oh, do you have pork? Say again. Do you have pork? Yes, I have. Okay. Now I'm quoting you. If you read the Old Testament, if you read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5, in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8, it says you should not have pork. I don't have pork. You have pork. If Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. I am promoting communal harmony. I am quoting a Bible. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 to 20, if you break one jot or tittle from the Old Testament, you shall never go to paradise. One law, if you break off the Old Testament, you shall not go to paradise. I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. I can go on and on. I can go on and on talking about the similarities. There are differences. I am not here to talk about difference. I am talking similarities. But the problem is, if you say Bible is the word of God, why aren't you following the commandments of the Bible? Why? So this is the problem with the followers, that when they want to follow the scripture, what my solution is, simple solution. One simple solution. I tell that at least believe that one book is the word of God. So Christian would not mind, okay, fine, I agree, Bible is the word of God. The Hindu will say, I don't mind believing Veda to be the word of God. And the Muslim will say, I don't mind believing Quran to be the word of God. I tell them, let us agree to follow what is common in all these three scriptures. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. Right or wrong, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let us agree today that let us follow 100% what is common in all these three scriptures. As I told in my lecture, that all these scriptures talk about one God. This God has got no images. He has got no picture, no portrait, no father, no mother. I have given quotations from the Old Testament, from the New Testament. I have given quotations from the Old Testament, New Testament, from the Vedas, from the Quran. Point number one. Let us agree there is one God. Worship Him alone, not Trinity. Not triune God, one God. Next, I had given the talk yesterday in Jawabaro. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the major world religious scriptures. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not only mentioned in the Quran, he's prophesied in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, in the Hindu scriptures, in the Vedas, in the Upanishads, in the Puranas. He's prophesied in the Parsi scriptures, in the Buddhist scriptures. Let us agree to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger. So easy. All the scriptures say don't have alcohol. Bible says don't have alcohol. Quran says don't have alcohol. The Hindu scripture, Manu Smithi says don't have alcohol. Let's stop having alcohol. So easy. Bible says do hijab. All the ladies should do hijab. They should cover their head. Only you see nuns and Mother Mary. You know Mother Mary? Mother Mary, her photograph is just like a Muslima. Properly covered. But when you see the other ladies, no. If you read the first Corinthians, first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number 5 and 6, it says the woman that does not cover her head, she dishonors her head, her head should be shaved off. Even in Islam, in Quran, it doesn't say that the woman who uncovers the head should be shaved off. This is how strict the Bible is for the woman to cover her head. But most of the Christian women we see, the heads are uncovered. So I'm trying to get communal harmony, not discord. So please don't come here and say things which are wrong.
Say again. Please don't come and lay allegation against me. I am bringing co-relationship. I am bringing communal harmony. That's the different thing that you want to go away from your Bible. I want to get you closer to your Bible. Thank you. Now, it, now I feel that it is not fair just because you follow certain things in the Bible, you become more Christian than Christians. I follow a lot of things which is also in the Muslim faith. And I know a lot of things the Muslims themselves don't follow in the Muslim faith. I'm sure you would agree with me. But would that make me more Muslim than Muslims? There is not a single statement you can give in the Quran as a whole. Not you may be better than one individual Muslim. He is a namesake Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. If he says he submits and he does not submit, he's a pseudo-Muslim. He will not go to Jannah. He will not go to Jannah. Just by saying that I'm a Muslim will not take him to paradise. I will openly say that. Unlike in your Christianity, that you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for your sins according to your church, and you go to heaven. That's not part of the Bible. That's the teaching of the church. So I'm here to promote communal harmony, to let people know. And what I'm telling is quotation directly. You tell me what is common. You tell me one thing in the Quran which I don't follow. Show me I one can, thing. Tell I me can. one thing. One thing I in the Quran. Some, I can see something common in what both of us are saying. Sorry? One, I can see something common. There are many things common, yes. not something common. I can see something common. I can see. I can see. I didn't say you can see. I said that I can, I can see something common in what both of us are seeing. There are many. I can see that there are some Christians who do not follow Christianity as, as well as they should. And I can see... There are some Muslims who do not follow what Islam teaches as they should. Not some Christians. According to statistics, majority Christians don't follow. According to statistics today, there are 7 billion people in the world. The people who profess the Christian faith, they may be close to 2 billion. The people that okay. profess the Islamic faith, more than 1.5 billion. But the people who follow, the majority in the world are Muslims. Majority. The Christians, they, they, they don't follow. So as a whole, the religion, we have black sheep in our community. But as a whole, the religion which is maximum followed, the teachings of any religion that is Islam. I know there are black sheep in our community. There are many black sheep. But as a whole, as a percentage, today's statistics tell us the religion which is maximum followed, the teachings based on the Quran, on the scripture, is number one Islam. That's the reason today the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. Brother, what's your, if you have any question? Uh, yes, you can brother. pose a question or go behind the queue. Yes, brother. Pose your question. Shall I? Okay. I just like to end by saying, I would like to say that, okay, I rephrase. There are some Christians who are not following the Christian doctrine. There are some Muslims who do not follow the Muslim doctrine. I would add, like end by saying, however, I would not want to boost my ego by saying, I am more Muslim than Muslims. Thank you, sir. Brother said there are some Christians who don't follow, not some Christian, majority people who claim to be Christians are not following the Bible according to statistics. And I do agree that there are some Muslims who are black sheep who are not following. Those who don't follow the scripture, those who go against the Quran, they are not true Muslims. They may be part or they may be pseudo. But you can never say, never ever can you say until you accept that there is one God. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. You can never claim to be better than the Muslims. They're utilizing, many people are utilizing the assistance of the jinn to assist them in their performances and everything. People don't realize these things. This is a whole nother reality, especially many of the Muslims are very ignorant towards this fact. They don't understand that this is a whole nother element. It's just not something that's, you know, friendly and things like this. No, you are inviting these things into your home on a deeper level. As some scholars refer to music, they refer to it as the Quran of Shaitan, Satan's Quran.